Hello, and welcome to the channel. This is actually the first time I'm posting a video here. It's actually a brand new channel. Before going any further, I wanted to thank 3D.ru for giving to the global 3D printing community the opportunity to share their ideas. I think this type of event is one of the best ways to encourage innovation and open up discussion. So my name is Adela Alwani and I represent Torem Labs. I'm introducing you for the first time today to the Torem Engine project. So the name of the company comes from the Latin word Torem, which means creator. We are a startup based in Montreal, Canada, and our goal here, hence the name, is to bring innovative ideas to the real world. The startup for me was a way of consolidating all my project ideas into a single entity. Since I didn't want them to just be ideas and die as ideas, I wanted a way to give them a chance to become something more through the innovation process. So as you probably guessed by now, I'm the founder of Torem Labs. I'm an aerospace engineer with interest in research and development. I'm also an avid 3D printing enthusiast. It's an important tool for my work, and so I'm always thinking about ways to make it better. What I can say is that I can see a lot of potential for innovation in the 3D printing industry, and I can't wait to share with you what I've seen, what I've been working on since early 2020. So let's look at the main issues in additive manufacturing that I have identified. The first and most obvious one is speed. Doing any form of acceleration leads to inefficiency and it simply slows things down. In FDM 3D printing, for example, the extruder assembly must be moved back and forth. While it's interesting to look at the bottom and top layers being built, it's not really the most efficient way to do it, especially considering the masses at play. Another example here is the SLA bottom-up 3D printing, where the bed has to go up and down to unstick itself from the vat, which is another type of acceleration that we wish didn't exist. More on this later, but in general though, this is the case for most 3D printing machines. There rarely is a smooth, continuous process which ends up with the part printed. Another issue with additive manufacturing is the requirement of manual labor. Having to wait for the print to be done and doing all the required post-processing usually takes someone to do it, even from transferring parts from one machine to another, and that's time the printer is not printing. We've seen some great innovation with the bell printers, which I personally find really cool. Next up is multi-material and multi-colors. Yes, we have those kinds of printers, but most of the 3D printers today, especially those available to the public, are only single color and single material. It has a lot of uses, and I actually feel like we aren't using multi-material 3D printing to its full potential yet. And then we have 3D printing farm efficiency. You will have costs and time and money associated with per machine that you have to deal with. I think most of the time, we'll have single parts printing on a single machine, and that means that we need more machines to make more parts. We can, we can have bigger print, 3D printers with bigger beds, but we're just back to square one, where we're limited by the ability of the machine to accelerate all the way across to the gigantic bed. I end this slide with a general issue that I've seen pop up more and more. That is of the increased pressure of buying local. This has accentuated due to recent pandemic events, where we've seen shortages, issues with logistics, and some government policies encouraging more local manufacturing. So this is where I come in with my proposal by introducing to you for the first time in public, the Torem engine. What it is? Well, it's a design platform which allows multiple print heads to deposit material on multiple beds in continuous, uninterrupted way, using rotation as its main drive mechanism. So remember earlier when I said that acceleration is slow? Well, the idea here is that when you have something rotating, you don't need to accelerate. Therefore, you're already faster and more efficient. The design platform's purpose is to be integrated with other manufacturing technologies. OEMs such as 3D systems, Stratasys, Formlabs, and the like, they could benefit from a system like that. They are the ones who are turning, who we are turning to because they usually hold the patents. Doing research, I feel like a lot of the industry focuses more on the materials and the position method methods rather than trying to optimize the machine as a whole. The reality is that everything is connected, from software to electronics, to the way the head moves and deposits materials selectively, all the way to post-processing, which is far from the machine. So once they integrate the Torem engine tech, the biggest benefactors will be the 3D printing service providers, such as 3D.ru itself, other, or others like Shapeways, Fathom Manufacturing, and eventually perhaps your local hardware store who could play everyone around. Those are typical scenarios which require high throughput 3D printing parts. They will eventually need to make as many parts as fast as possible. So try doing that with only one part per machine. So what kind of additive technology can be adapted to Torem Engine? 
Well, theoretically, every type could work. There's even a nice overview made by 3D Hubs at the end of the presentation that we'll link below. It will definitely be, require some innovation and some reinventing, but you will see very soon that this effort will be worth it all the, for all the advantages that the engine can bring. There is a huge potential for innovation here, and it's a way for those OEMs to quickly differentiate themselves from their competitors, especially if they hold the same key common technologies. So for the following three slides, I'll take the time to explain how this engine works and what it can actually do. Here is Here we have a top view of the machine. First, I'm oversimplifying the head to, as a cylinder or as a roller seen from the top to illustrate my point, which is, as I mentioned, could be anything that simply deposits material or cures it or whatever. For this example, let's use a curved bed to really make it work. This was the first idea I had when I started everything. You can see on the left what this bed could look like in 3D and the direction that it has to go to grow the printed part. It's like a normal bed, but with a radius equal to the one equal to the machine. As mentioned earlier, this machine is based on rotation, so the print head rotates across the bed in a circular motion. Every time the print head does a full rotation, it prints a single layer on the curved bed. When it finishes the layer, the bed goes down by one layer, as any other 3D printer would, and so on. We can immediately see a correlation between the RPM and the number of layers per minute, and therefore millimeters per minute, uh, parts per minute, and so on. The great thing about this is that we become limited only by the ability of the print head to deposit and solidify the layer. The faster the print head can do this, the more we can increase the RPM and therefore print faster. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. What about the curved layers? It's kind of unconventional, I have to admit. It's an interesting consequence of this example. In fact, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong about it. It will be relatively easy to modify the software slicers to cut in curved planes instead of a flat plane. Sure, you'd need more support, but it's not like we're not already doing that in most 3D printing. And, if anything, the part will be slightly stronger in the Z direction, because the layers will actually share some of that layer strength through the Z axis and not rely purely on how the layers stick together. But let's move on that so I can show you what the real deal is about. Here we're exploring what I meant by multiple print heads and multiple beds. So, this is the key that allows for uninterrupted continuous operation on the machine. On this engine, the print head can rotate and print 24-7 due to the fact that they can all access beds in parallel. Let's look at an example with five print heads. Each having their own colors, they are printing on five beds in parallel. They all rotate together counterclockwise. The beauty of this is that each bed doesn't need to know what's going on on the other beds, so as long as the other five print heads pass it for a bit. That means that if a print is done on one of the beds, the engine allows the other beds to be printed on. In the meantime, you can work freely on the finished print. You can even be fancier and use that belt innovation we talked about earlier, or an automated dropping mechanism to get the parts out, then get ready for the print next print, and then everything continues. And again, meanwhile, the other beds are printing on the same machine. Well, I don't know about you, but I think this is pretty amazing. You don't have to limit yourself at five print heads, five beds either. You can be anything, you can, any combination you can imagine. Here I have a small surprise too. Maybe some people don't like the idea of curved beds, and that's okay. That's why I have a second example here. What if I told you that I have thought of a way to print objects with traditional flat layers but using the same rotation mechanism? I was actually inspired by the Wankel rotary engine and changed the position of and shape of each print head. In this example, you are seeing a Torum engine with five colors and six flat beds. So there is a lot going on here. I'm gonna let you look at this. Um, but in short, it's basically a pentagon rolling inside a hexagon. Five print heads and six beds. It allows for the same advantages mentioned earlier, but with flat layers. The print head works kind of like a stamp and presses the layers in position. Notice how on each on a single bed, each time it does one full turn, the pentagon deposits a layer of a different color. That's how we can achieve multicolor on all beds simultaneously and continuously. To end this slide, there is a question of how to continuously feed the print heads. The material has to come from the outside to supply the print heads, especially when they're running 24-7. Uh, there are a few ways you can do this, but in short, it really depends on each print head technology and materials you want to get in the center. There's a lot more to discover and innovate based on these two examples. But I'll leave that for another time since I'm mainly here to discuss the engine itself. 
So how do we make this real? Let's talk about Torem's prototype, our own prototype we're developing. As mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to be OEMs. We're going. It's going to be the OEM sprint head to be adapted on the engine. It's important for us to prove that this is feasible and that there is actually an advantage in using the engine. Nothing beats a good old prototype that speaks for itself. We are currently working on a prototype design that is using SLA technology and will cure resin using a projector. We are starting simple with two print heads and two curved beds. With this setup, we are already three to four times faster than a standard bottom-up SLA uh, 3D printer using the same exposition time. And you can get exponential return in speed when you start adding more print heads and more beds. We use standard materials and we explore wire soluble resins to print support material on the second print head. In the aim of being efficient and iterate quickly on our prototype, we'll be using open source electronics and software so that we can easily change settings and iterate work on the code quickly. This is the first integration of a print head and it will go without saying that we're already innovating in the space of SLA print heads and resin management systems. The most direct competition I could think of in terms of efficiency is Carbon 3D's DLS process, formerly CLIP. For those who don't know, it's an interesting, really interesting process that allows printing continuously without the back and forth movement I mentioned before. They can do that thanks to a layer of oxygen that inhibits curing close to the VAT window. But for this type of SLA printer, is the standard one machine, one bed, one material. Having the same material is a burden because it means most of the post-processing at the end, it means more post-processing, I mean, to remove support, which is still the same material. One thing to consider with the layerless process is that it has to slow down the z-axis speed to let resin flow into that famous oxygen-rich zone. Finally, what I, what I think is sad about it is that this is all proprietary technology that will probably never be licensed to third parties, unless you actually rent the machine and use the machine yourself. In comparison, even though our engine is patent pending, we would actually love to see our technology used by as many people as possible through fair license agreements. While it's true that it won't be your average doe that, that will be able to do that, we're embracing the true definition of open innovation, which is actually our organization working together to develop innovative products and allow them to do things they were not able to do by themselves and thus allowing them to compete. The protection of each other's interests is what allows to unlock funding for projects that would have probably never seen the day. I personally would have liked, liked and loved to have the engine open source, but the reality is that it would have probably been useless considering that most of the more useful and interesting additive technologies are locked behind patents. I've personally invested my own money into this project but anyways, I'm open to discuss the subject in long and large, but that's a discussion for another time. So speaking of time, I'm showing here the grand plan for the Torum engine. The prototype from the previous slide will be ready to test around summer 2022. It will need around 30 to $40,000 to complete and test. The goal of this prototype is to showcase what the technology will be able to accomplish. This prototype is special because it needs to be easily adjustable and to make it work as quickly as possible, from changing heads, adjusting heights, changing beds, and onboard computers. Once this is achieved, we'll be able to prove the concept to potential OEM partners who we want to integrate their own technology to the Torium engine. We are open to all types of partnerships and open to negotiate with each one, but we'd like to have at least one of each type of additive technology. I believe that the attractive aspect of the partnership is that there is the possibility for those partners to own part of the Torium engine by bringing some new innovation to their, of their own to the mix. The next step is to make prototypes, which I'm roughly evaluating at an order magnitude more than to allow for engineering support. Same for the testing phase. Finally, we can start seeing high yield 3D printers available for commercialization and be used to increase the production of 3D printed parts all over the world. Ideally close to home to make it easier for the common person to get products much cheaper and much faster than ever before. The ideal partner should be open about licensing patents because we do not want the engine to be limited to only one set of technology. We would like those partners to work with us while understanding the core issues that we are trying to solve, so speed, efficiency, etc. We need those partners to be experienced in additive manufacturing so that they can actually bring together the industry as a whole forward. As for us, well, we still have our own challenges. We need to hire more engineers, time to finalize the prototype, funding to purchase and make parts, and we need to, make, to be well equipped in the lab to make 
or do work efficiently. So here are the re some reasons to work with me. I have experience in bringing aerospace-grade innovation to the industry. I believe I'm a competent engineer with a multidisciplinary skill set. I've studied innovation management so that I'm aware of what's required to bring ideas through the process of innovation. I've been told multiple times that I'm easy to work with and communicate with. I also like to think that I'm a very creative person. I think there's always a solution to any problem. And finally, you should work with us because we strongly believe that this is the future of additive manufacturing. The Torium engine gives all the tools required to propel the 3D printing industry forwards. So thank you for your attention and do not hesitate to contact me if you have questions. I will also be reading your comments below and I'm always open to feedback. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, to end this video, I leave a really, this really nice poster made that by 3D House, which I'll leave the link below. It's missing some key te some technologies that are not, uh, it's not updated yet. Um, but otherwise, it gives a really great overview of what technologies are available. And that could be a potentially adapted to the Torum engine. I can actually tell you that I'm already th thinking of three or four different new technologies I'd like to try one day. But the engine is where it all starts for me. So thank you again for your attention, and I'll see you around.